tight for foil. Hang tight for foil, folks. There we go. That was probably uh, dissuading the one user that was going to jump in here from jumping in here. So. Oh, like the official barrel buddy? The official barrel buddy. <laughs> yes. The, uh, the, only, the only drawback is, like, we're, we're getting, uh, I'm getting, like, um, I can't hear myself, like, the, the phone. So we, let's explain that a little bit. Well, uh, why don't you just get, you need to stop streaming watching. Just yeah, no, follow along on your phone, I'm right? Done with that. Oh, okay. okay. Audio's off? Audio's off. Audio off. What? No, audio's good. No, computer audio. Off. No, your computer. Yeah, your audio. That way you don't have to hear yourself. Yeah, unless, yeah, no. I'm, unless yeah. you want to. I, I already turned the stream off. Don't cross the streams. Don't cross the streams. Ghostbusters told me that. Exactly. Uh, let me do a little post here on Facebook. <laughs> We have any? Uh, we have anybody watching? Anybody tuned in? No. no. You know the worst part is, is is that we did our barrel buddies. I need everybody to do a, like a Facebook blast, or at least BJ. I did. I just did. I just did mine. Okay. My Facebook is on my phone. Oh well, then you are not going to be doing a blast. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> very unfortunate, Zach. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. It took a good fifteen to twenty minutes on the first show, so I'm not, you know, not worried. Actually, it's kind of funny. Last time, you know, like when we were, we were doing the audio test on Tuesday, like eight people jumped on almost immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I and so For the subscribers. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. So the subscribers have all been notified. All 14 of them that we are live so you know and what are we three of those 14 Probably. no you you are one oh i'm getting some facebook replies here so yes yep um anyway yeah i mean it took time i mean think about the the first stream and then i would say what it took <laughs> We had like 12 people at one point, but it took, you know, an hour in. Right. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, I think I'm ready for you to pour a little of that beer, our, our liquid gold. Absolutely. I'll take some here if you don't yeah. mind. Pour some, pour some on the camera to see. Tuesday. Man, that is like, ooh, doggy. Give me a good, good heft there. There we go. Take that. <clears throat> All right. Um, are you taking any like meds over there? So when you start drinking a little Elijah Craig, it's really gonna get you all loopy. No. Okay. No meds. <laughs> Black Tuesday. No, no Vikes so. or uh, Tramadol injections or whatever oh, no. they were giving you. No, no, I got none of that going on. <laughs> so that okay. would that would lead to a very wild night. Yeah, no, we're not we're not going crazy. No. Uh, Still a little yeah, crazy. Don't tram it all. I, I would like a crazy Barrel Buddies night, though. I think we do need one completely off the rails. Like, I like it. Yeah, I'll say, like, we'll do that when we can get, like, 25 consistent viewers. We'll do, like, a 25, 50, 100 <clears throat> party where once we have 25, we just, just go wild, hog oh, wild. It's like an achievement show. Achievement show. I like that. Achievement unlocked. Achievement unlocked. 25 users. 25. <laughs> 25 unlocked. 50 unlocked. 100 unlocked. 500 and 1,000. I think that's those are good. Right. What about the million? Think, what are we going to do for the million? So we get to 100. We'll just the dots of, of Everclear. <laughs> if we had 1 million uh, viewers... Um, we would have to quit our day jobs. I'll tell you that right now. I don't think any of these streamers have a million viewers. So. No, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. lot. That's that's like a, a city of people watching the show. Like all of Las Vegas is watching the barrel. Bars. Yeah, I think at most I've seen maybe forty, fifty thousand on some of these like really crazy streamers that you know just dominate these games, Vigia games. Yeah. So. 
All right, cheers. Do a little cheers. Ooh, I like Tuesday. Sorry you can't toast this over there, BJ. Uh, I'm toasting you with some uh, grapefruit-flavored seltzer water. Wow. That wow. is fantastic. Man, oh my man. Gosh. And it's 21% ABV. Yeah, so this is the 2020 Black Tuesday Reserve, now that I don't want to take away too much from bourbon, but it's aged in bourbon barrels, so there is relevance <clears throat> here. Um, so what they did was they took Black Tuesday already is aged, you know, for a year in bourbon barrels, right? It's a barrel-aged stout, for those that don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what they do is they... <sighs> I don't know why it says we're going to drop it. Here. Let's see. No, we're not. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. I, I think it's the, uh, it's the camera's autofocus. Maybe. Does it keep going? Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I can change that eventually. Focusing in. Yeah. Um, I think that's what it is. Anyway, um, so what they do is, uh, it looks like, so they add it for another, they basically dump it out of that one barrel. They add some more goodies to it, and then they re-rack it for another year. So it's a two-year Black Tuesday, and they call it Black Tuesday Reserve. And uh, you have this majestic uh, members-only beer. And this bad boy for 2020 is coming in at 21%. <laughs> that is insane. How there there is no heat to that at all. Yeah, no, it is it is very smooth. Let's Black, see if we can get a little focus on that. And Black Tuesday is so Black Tuesday Reserve. Yeah, it's, and, it's uh, known for its heat too. Yeah, you know? yeah, like uh, a regular Black Tuesday, which is just sits there for a year. Um, definitely, you know, it's well, you know, 18 to 20 percent. I think 21 is probably one of their highest years they've ever made. Yeah. Yeah, it's always been there. I think regular Black Tuesday is uh, 20%. Like, yeah, I mean, 17 to 20, yeah. 18 to 20. -ish. Depending on the year. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the year. How they brew it. Yeah. Fantastic. I like it. Super tasty. Um, So just to kind of jump in, uh, and BJ, I know, well, both of you, the... We talked a lot about that affordable bourbon, right? We talked a lot about that. What's out there that is an everyday bourbon someone can go out and buy. And it's, we'll say, 30 to $50. Readily available. Something you can usually pick up everywhere. And Elijah Craig, obviously, is the first thing that came to mind. Um, where this differs from our previous show with Garrison Brothers, Garrison Brothers is made in Texas, thus giving it the designation of a whiskey, whereas Elijah Craig is made in Kentucky, in Bourbon County, and can thus be designated as a bourbon. Bourbon whiskey. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Wow. Wow. Very knowledgeable. So tonight we have two iterations of Elijah Craig. We have Elijah Craig's small batch and a little a few stories behind that bad boy. And that's the 30 bucks. That's that's not small batch, is it? Ah, it is. Excellent. So there's small batch for those that don't uh, that haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. And then that's that 30, I'd say like 25 to 40 dollar bourbon you can pretty much get it anywhere hell i've seen it at some 7-elevens quickie marts whatever you want to call them like it's there like if you look up on their shelf you can usually find an elijah craig readily available right and then we're gonna kick it up a notch <laughs> that's probably trademark can't even say that and uh we have elijah craig's barrel proof which is the uncut unfiltered straight from that's it that's it that you're shaking around in your little tester that's it yeah the <laughs> um it's almost double the abv right so what what is that one coming in at so this one comes in at 47 percent. okay well not double so this is uh <clears throat> excuse me the barrel proof comes in at 61.1 yeah. 
Quite a bit of a difference. Yeah, quite a bit of a difference. Yep. I don't know if we can really focus in on that. But. Very similar taste, though. Very, very similar, like, yeah, flavor profile, but that barrel proof with that extra um, alcohol. It's got a know, kick to it. Yep. Definitely has a kick to it. Definitely has a kick to it. So what are we going to start with? Uh, we're going to start with Mr. Zach will be pouring the small batch because we're going to start low ABV and we'll work our way up. All right. Remind me, the small batch is the one with the label. <clears throat> the label. Yes. yes. One with the label. Mm-hmm. We're going to go just to the lip. So you guys are drinking out of a cool new Glen Karen glass tonight. Oh, oh yeah. we sure are. Oh, these are great. And, uh, and I'm going to be drinking tonight out of a uh, Kentucky Bourbon Trail glass, which is a little different. It's got it's a fat bottom. Uh, it's much, much rounder, ballooned glass, but still uh, it offers a good evaporation. Um, <clears throat> but it's still got the concentrated... Uh, the concentrated uh, drinking part, which uh, allows for a good nose and uh, good evaporation on the surface area. So it's kind of a cool glass, a little different, a little different than what you guys are drinking out of, but does essentially the same thing. Yep. Yeah, same with these. See that? Very nice. Hmm. What a color. What was the color? Uh, the official color was uh, burnished copper. If I remember right. correctly. <laughs> yes. Burnished copper. So the line of everybody. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where did this guy come There from? we go. You know, <laughs> colors of bourbons. Hello, Jamba. Oh, hey, Jamba. Sorry, I'm posting on our social media feed to get some of the some of the word out. Um. Wow, I can already kind of smell this right as after you poured it. A little swirl. Wow, 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 wow. So, I'm uh, I'm joining you remotely tonight because uh, I caught the vid. So I'm uh, I'm remoted in on vid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, vid on vid. With the vid on vid. The vid on vid. That's me. Uh, so, so what do you got in your my, nose there, BJ? My nose and my taster is a little is a little down, unfortunately. So this is going to be uh, this will be an adventure. Wow. Yeah. Man. You know what? I got a new flavor profile, like a new smell. So like a new smell, and this is going to sound ridiculous. Um, and this could be bad for some people because this is a very contested candy. Candy, uh, candy corn. I get the candy. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that that orange with orange. Yeah, definitely orange. Yeah, the orange maybe with the the, uh, the beer, caramel, and then that corn. that forms the candy corn. Uh, uh. Cream. I'm gonna put there's there's this creamy, like cream. I, I don't know. Cream is not really a smell, but no. It, Maybe maybe a maybe a vanilla. Are you talking like a custard? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's custard. I mean, it's like it's it's not really burnt sugar. Um, vanilla it's custard that smell pudding. Of like fresh baked pastries. Um, that's that's coming through. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. My first smell. I think we um, we kind of smell smelt a little bit of banana in there. But I think that may have been mistaken for the orange. I, I get a little banana. Banana, orange, clove. Baking spices. Absolutely. A little nutmeg. Yeah. I don't know about that, but to each his own, right? I guess. <laughs> not a fan of nutmeg. Come yeah, on. not a fan of nutmeg. All right. So are we ready to jump into this? Or, uh, you know, what's the game plan here? I'd say maybe so give it a minute. You wanna... I think, can. Jimmy, if it's possible, <clears throat> can you put on a little background music? <laughs> yeah, I really can't. Oh, man. Um, we're going to just hear my ring announcement because I think uh, the other half is home, so she's going to bust in here any minute. Very nice. I heard some, 
some uh, walking around over there. Oh. Maybe it is, yeah. A little side gate action. Yeah, Oof. I'm ready when you Yeah, I think start. we're ready to jump in, so cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. There we are. Cheersy. That is tasty. Yeah. I'm getting a lot more of that spice, uh, that upfront spice, um, but it's very approachable. And by that, I mean, I think anybody could drink this. Like, yeah, even though I would consider us all three of us seasoned drinkers per se. Um, Maybe somebody, think, somebody that's new to bourbon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. if you if you need a bourbon to give to someone or to share with someone, or you're at a restaurant, and they're like, oh yeah, order me a bourbon, and, you know, you're just kind of like, okay, well, what do I get? You're always, I think, going to win with an Elijah Craig. Yeah, almost a guarantee that. See that and and I think it gets a bad rap. I think people associate a $30 bottle of bourbon, and they're like, oh, it's got to be dog shit. Right. Which it is not. Clearly. It's not. So, what do you got? Yeah, what do you got over there, Beej? Um, a lot of that spice, for sure. Um, Maybe like a peppery flavor? My, um, my, my palate is a gloss still. But... That clove smell kind of, um, I think it, it comes through in the taste, too. Yeah, I think uh, clove is a good call. Um, baking spice is a good call. <clears throat> um... It does, it does open up a little bit in the back end, and I think it, it does kind of give way a little bit to that candy corn. Um, I'm keeping that front of mind. I think that's a, a good profile. Um, so you got that, that spicy, that spicy fall time baking spice uh, that really get, kind of opens up into a nice uh, vanilla, caramel, Lot, lots candy of vanilla corn flavor. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with the vanilla as well. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. A lot of caramel. A lot of spice. A lot of vanilla. Some orange. Wouldn't you say or no? There's some orange in there. A little orange? Yeah, I guess yeah, I get that orange for sure. But it's not, you know back Rex and effects here. I think we should be good. Chat room. Alright. Anyway. We're gonna get this right. Eh, it's a couple tries. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, we definitely um, had to think outside of the box to get you loaded into the, uh, <laughs> put you the on stream. An, put you on an iPhone and <laughs> FaceTime to you. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Actually, I think it looks great, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, it works. It works. <laughs> I mean, that we're, we're basically doing the same thing as picture in picture, right? Yeah. Except exactly. you're just mounted right there. <laughs> yeah. You know, we can hear you. Everyone else can, too. Up a lot of friends. Let that happen. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. The CPU isn't spiking. No. Hmm. Yep, we're live. All right. All right. It is, it is. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're back. We're back. <clears throat> we're back, in, back in action. Back in action. All right. Definitely me. I started chatting in the chat to see if I could get people to talk it up. And... My bandwidth. <laughs> that soaked up the bandwidth. Oh, oh yeah. Look Brad. who that is. Hey, Brad. The Brad roll. Long time to see. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers yeah. to the Brad Cheers, roll. Cheers. There we are. <laughs> Little Elijah Craig. I'm not sure if you're a fan or not. I know that you like the, uh, the Kraken rum. Kraken rum is fantastic. So. You know, I... Yeah, so I don't want to deviate too much from whiskey, but a rum that I briefly would like to chat about um, is actually a bottle I have right here that I picked up last week, and it is called The Real McCoy. I saw that at one. The Real McCoy, okay. So this runs 45 bucks. Liquor World here in Vegas has it, and I'm sure plenty of other places have it. 
Uh, quick backstory behind this guy. So during Prohibition, the most infamous rum runner was Bill McCoy. And for any fans of Boardwalk Empire, he's a character in the show. I'm not a huge character, but he's in there. So Bill McCoy was known for running rum. And they he apparently had some like amazing recipe, right? But the recipe got lost after Prohibition because all these other people started making rum. They put their own twist on it, make it in a bathtub, add a bunch of sh- whatever, and it just kind of went away. So queue up uh, about 10, 15 years ago, apparently um, there was some documentary, some producer that went on a hunt for the original recipe that Bill McCoy had because everybody said this was like the best rum they've ever had. Um, he found the recipe like through talking with some people um, and just interviewing people. He ended up like coming across the recipe. So he ended up taking that recipe to a very well-known rum distillery down in Barbados called Foursquare. I know it sounds very random, Foursquare. What the hell? Mm-hmm. So Foursquare um, has earned the reputation and nickname the Pappy of Rum, which for us bourbon folk and whiskey drinkers, Pappy is like one of the most elusive, best-tasting well, what most people say is the, like, the best tasting bourbon uh, in the world. Uh, rum really isn't trendy right now. It's not mainstream. I mean, I would say every... I, I think you get cycles, right? You get like five, ten year cycles of like some weird liquor <clears throat> resurrecting itself, you know. Mm-hmm. For a, a, a long time there, everybody was into like martinis, vodka martinis, and there was a whole gin phase of a couple years, and then Everybody turned back to, like, whiskey sours and old fashions. and Well, that's what it is right now. Exactly. And then you have, like, the whole rum phase where it's all, like, these mixed drinks and et cetera, et cetera. I'd love to see if that comes next. Yeah. So we're in a unique spot here because Foursquare distributes to Nevada. Um, and you can not only find the real McCoy, which is what this is, the real McCoy. You can find Foursquare, uh, which is rated and talked about among rum heads as, you know, the pappy of rum. So be on the lookout for square rum distillery. If you're a big rum person and, um, yeah, there's my, my little rum rant, brief rum rant. Hey, you're <laughs> rum educated. now. You're a little rum educated. So Zach and I already popped back a few of these. We had some, uh, fruit, Fruit juice and rum. Fruit juice and rum. Cocktails. FJ, FJR. Yeah, these are, these are pretty tasty. <laughs> pretty damn tasty. Just so uh, I know, Brad, you, you just joined in. Um, just wanted to let you know what we were getting into tonight. The Elijah Craig Small Batch. Um, BJ, you had mentioned that this would be, if, if you like crack and rum, you would enjoy the uh, the Elijah small match? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, again, it's that uh, it's that it, I can't get away from it. Jim, James said uh, the candy corn at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's uh, <laughs> what a great descriptor. Yeah, it's strange, uh, isn't it? Like you do kind of get that candy corn, and it's like I'm imagining it now. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even see it. I didn't even think about that before. Mind, and it's definitely right there. I think yeah. I think it's really, really good. Um, I will tell you that uh, I've, I've had what we're going to drink next, the, the uh, Barrel Proof, which is probably one of my top five bourbons. Um, it's so, so, so good. And I, I don't think I like this quite as much, um, but I think if I continue to hang on to that idea of candy corn, creme brulee, um, I, I think that that's a flavor profile that makes this a, a really enjoyable bourbon. Um, I added a little water to mine, you know, just a oh. couple of drops of water. I'm actually really enjoying it a lot more, uh, just adding a little water. So actually, I'm going to do the same. I have not cut it yet, so... Well, that totally changes the mouthfeel to it, too. Yeah, I think it makes it a little cooler. Uh, yeah. Again, I think adding a little water brings uh, some hints of, of mint um, to the to the 
forefront of the palette. Um, but it's uh, it, to me, it opens it up a lot, and I think you get a lot more of that that vanilla, that um, caramel. I think those notes really come through when you cut it with a little. Wow, yeah. No, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Like, I'm definitely getting a lot of um, caramel. Yeah. I keep getting, I keep going back to, like, vanilla custard, like that custardy mm -hmm. vanilla. Well, the, the vanilla even comes up yeah. even more with the water. Vanilla bomb. Like, this definitely, you add a little bit of water. Like, I get zero mint. Maybe some of you guys are getting mint. I, I don't get mint at all. Just the taste. I just get vanilla. A lot of heavy, like, baking. Baking spices, vanilla. And the nose. The nose opens up a lot with that vanilla and baking spice. Yeah. And it, and it you know, I wasn't getting a lot of ethanol when I before it was cut because it's not, you know, a super high ABV. Uh, now it's even more approachable when you uh, on the smell. <clears throat> wow. The vanilla really comes out on the taste, too. A lot of orange still, I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys are getting the same thing as I am. Or no, and, and I'm almost gonna maybe divert that comment and not say so much orange, but citrus. Citrusy. Yeah, yeah I think that's citrusy. I almost want to yeah, label it as. I would go more lemon. If I was gonna get, yeah. if I'm getting a, a citrus, I'd pick up more on a lemon than I would on a on, a, on an orange. Yeah, and I, I think that that might just be personal preference. Um, so I, I would label that as a citrus like when i think about when i think about orange you know maker's mark always carries a big orange orange peel uh flavor profile and i don't quite get that here um but i do get yeah i, I can see the citrus thing um i guess again especially after cutting it i get it a lot more. yeah absolutely absolutely Absolutely. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yes. Citrus and fruit. I think I'm ready to get into that barrel proof. <laughs> um. so, uh, so for those of you that have joined us on the, uh, on the feed, please <laughs> chime in. Don't be afraid to, uh, to text in some questions, thoughts. Maybe you're drinking with us yeah brad uh, what are you what are you, you drinking know, don't be yeah we, we, we're, we're uh we're not scary we, we know we know brad you're, you're cracking into a kraken you got some sailor jerry there's something Ooh, going on here. sailor and coke yeah sailor. exactly there there's something going on over there let us know brad Where, where's where's ginger ginger bite us <laughs> Ginger bites. I I uh I sent out the uh, kind of APB to everybody and Ghost Town. I'm surprised. I was mm -hmm. expecting like this to be probably um our biggest show, but we're trending right now to where it's gonna be less than the first show. So. I mean, it is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's right. <clears throat> yeah, and maybe maybe it's the lack of you being here in person, BJ, that's really causing this. Uh, that's what it is. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, yeah, I know. The autofocus is a little... Um, is that an easy thing to do real quick? Or Maybe, actually, yeah. Get out of the way okay. here and I'll, uh, I'll give it a shot. Pause, y'all. Right. No, because I, I have been a little frustrated by that autofocus. So let's see what we can... Uh, Thank you, so Statchel. We appreciate I pour, it. Should I pour this last ounce of, um, of the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we jump in, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed uh, my last ounce just now. Another flash. Cleaning mode. Here. I'll sit here and see if it'll focus in on us. Yeah, no, it's done. It's not going to do the weird. Move your hand in front of the camera a little bit, do a little, like, yeah, no, it's it's not gonna do that or shit anymore. Oh, oh look man. at that! There we it's go. Trillium stash squad. <laughs> oh, well done, well done, sir. I miss I, I miss. Yeah, I mean I miss Trillium. Uh, I have a few bottles left, but I don't have any of the cans. And oh, what a fantastic um, 
Yes, I love it. I love it. Daily serving, uh, <clears throat> any of the permutations, uh, no, Melcher no, Street. Sorry. That was my favorite. Melcher Street, cutting tiles, some of my Fib favorite IPAs of best all time. IPAs, best I like when I when I had when I had Melcher Street, I, the first time I had it, sitting at Trillium, drank it and I go And hold on, because I talked it up and I'm like, dude, you did you gotta have Trillium. It's amazing. Yes. And yeah, and I'm sure you're probably like, Well, it's an IPA, it can't be that fucking good. Because I was only I was used to West Coast IPAs, you know. I'm, exactly. I'm like like Pliny the Elder, awesome, right? But yeah. Most West Coast IPAs, I'm not really I, super super amazing and, and it's and it, i would say they're fairly thin because our water is not the greatest on the west coast right a lot of um yeah uh and just say yeah that hard water and the piney like yeah. that that piney pine tree essence of an ipa mm -hmm. and it's clear and it's just kind of that like traditional well they call it a west coast ipa yeah. and that's like what we kind of grew up with is like that's the only option for an IPA. Yeah, and like you, you like you, you're imagining yourself, imagining yourself, you know, drinking hops. You can taste the hops. I mean, it's like just yeah, so exactly. Cool. But then you go to Trillium and you have a New England IPA for the first uh, time, like insane. a true New England IPA. Oh, and I had a New England IPA when I was you know, but before I went out to Trillium, yeah, that was brewed here completely non new england IPA. <laughs> completely, like i mean like the it's like night and day between here and there yeah you know, on the east coast in boston like uh but when i had that melter street first time i had it i looked at it i drank it and i said james this is the best ipa i have ever had in my life my god insane yeah absolutely good stuff Hey, for um, Statue and Brad, do you see any frame drops, anything like that? Any yeah, we're getting frame? some errors that we're getting a lot of frame drop, but I'm hardwired in. And I, I don't know if it's maybe just the finicky app has some alerts set at a, maybe the threshold is oh, too low. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's That's it. what I'm thinking. Maybe you, lo you lose one and it just, maybe it's set too high. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think we're choppy. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of watching the stream and it looks okay. Yeah. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay. It looks fine. Um, but yeah, uh, Trillium. Oh, good stuff. The Affogato. Oh, good yeah. Stuff. And not only Affogato. that, but their stouts. Yeah. Like their stouts are amazing, too. Yeah, that whole place is amazing. Especially the pastrami sandwich. Yeah. Pastrami, <laughs> pastrami sandwich. This is stellar. Extra uh, peppercorns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Be careful Just be careful. Of your teeth. Careful your teeth. If you have old teeth. <laughs> if you have old teeth and you bite into that pastrami. <laughs> it might move one of them. You may move oh, or crack a tooth. Just saying. Right. Make sure you have an emergency. <laughs> Make sure you have an emergency dentist on call just in case. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Okay. Inside story. Let's move on. Brad knows it. <laughs> oh, wow. We have, a, we have a furry visitor over on BJ's end over there. Mildred. It's little Millie. Mildred. Oh, Mildred. Is Millie a bourbon drinking dog? I don't know. Let's find out. Like, oh, hello? Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Millie. That's amazing. Drinking the that bourbon. Bourbon drinking dog. Okay, Excellent. okay. Well, maybe you should pull it back a little bit. Yeah, just give her a little water. You know, just give her a little snort. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'll kind of even things out. We may be, like, there may be some, like, animal violation on Twitch that will shut our stream down. <laughs> I see, we, we didn't see the tongue go into the bourbon, so. Yeah, we technically didn't see the dog lap up the bourbon. <laughs> so it wasn't on the stream. It wasn't live. Right. It was only suggested, right? Exactly. Yeah. No animals were drunk in the making of tonight's stream. <laughs> That's going to be our disclaimer every show. There we go. No animals were drunk. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, I'm going to wrap up the last of this uh, small batch. Where are you at? Where are you at, Beej, on that? Uh, I'm going to clear the glass here with a little uh, water a clear. water. And uh, be ready to, to take a, 
a, a trip into the uh, barrel proof here. Dabble into barrel proof. Yeah, I think we're uh, in the same boat. I'm going to let Zach uh, do the honors of pouring us a little barrel proof. <clears throat> and then we'll, uh, we're going to jump right in. And then we'll get talking about barrel proof too. All right. So barrel proof. <clears throat> and we really didn't talk about small batch process that much either. Oh, yes. Regale us of the small batch process. Yeah, so... Actually, I have a, a little story of Elijah Craig to enlighten everyone. Um, so a handful of years ago, I'd say within 10 years, 10, 15 years ago, um, a light, oh, a little bark there. Elijah Craig, the small batch was called Elijah C Craig 12 year. It had the age statement on it, right? So for a very long time, it was just Elijah Craig 12. That was the base Elijah Craig that you can get your hands on. Well, when bourbon um, kind of had its resurgence uh, five to ten years ago, uh, they started running out of the 12-year bourbon. Um, so Bourbon County rules, or laws actually, um, with bourbon and age statements, and it, it, they're very strict rules. They have to adhere to these rules like to a T. Um, and they started running low on 12-year stock, so they're like, shit, what do we do? So they were like, okay, we're going to remove the age statement. We're going to start blending whatever's left of the 12-year with our 4-year and 8-year stocks to kind of keep keep it going. And we're just going to add the name Small Batch in lieu of 12-year. Make it sound fancy. Right? And, and it's really just to make it sound fancy. I mean, I, I don't know that anyone... Um, there's not a true... There, there's, so there's not like a government definition for small batch in the alcohol community and the bourbon community it's just kind of a hipster millennial oh it's small batch so it must be artisanal yeah bourbon at, at first glance like you look at it and you say wow that is something special oh yeah it's in cursive it's a show that show the show the camera oh uh, yes yeah the small batch is oh. in cursive oh small batch it's is it small it's small font yes. small font very small font it's very <laughs> boutique you know, and you look at it, and it looks very, very fancy. Yeah. <laughs> to the untrained eye. <laughs> to the untrained eye. To the untrained... Anyway, that's your small batch story. So since then, um, they've replenished their 12-year stock, but they never picked up the name. They, ne they never brought back 12-year. Um, but Elijah Craig, so they, they make a few different variations um, of their bourbon. So outside of the small batch, which is the one Zach just showed that is readily available, the barrel proof is kind of that next step up that we're about to drink. Okay, Barrel proof has a lot more alcohol to it. So this one particular barrel proof that we are drinking, 61.1%. So this is going to really kind of punch you. This is coming from 47%. 47% for the small batch. Yep. And then 61. 61. And then <clears throat> above this guy, you have their 18-year and their 23-year Elijah Craig, which we'll, we'll, we'll hang on to those unicorns for uh, another show. So Barrel Proof, I can already kind of smell the ethanol. Hear oh, it. yeah. Hear it. Time. I can smell the ethanol from here. Can you so hear it? Oh, I hear it. I can hear it, too. It's saying, drink me. Drink me. Woo! <laughs> um... Yeah, wow. Uh, surprisingly, it's very similar to the small batch. Even though I smelled some ethanol, I it's not like what a 61% I imagine. Like usually when I would smell... Let's use the Garrison Brothers last week or two weeks ago as an example. Good. That was comparison. like, whoa, way too much ethanol. Yep. That And that was coming in at 57.5% on the yep. Balmora. And that was like kind of almost overwhelming. Right. This kind of hard to taste it at sixty one point one. Doesn't bother me at all when I smell it. No, not at all. It's got a uh, similar, similar, um, similar nose to the small batch. I would say just a lot more concentrated. Yeah. What do you say, BJ? Yeah. What's your verdict over there? You're already you're already in the tasting phase. You're you're light years ahead of us. He's like you're smelling. I'm drinking. Yeah. You already pounded half of it. <laughs> I'm streets ahead. 
Yeah. She's <laughs> like, I got things, I got things to do. Um, so I get a ton of ethanol in the nose. Um, and I, I, I haven't, I actually haven't started drinking. Um, but I think that for me to truly appreciate the nose, I am going to have to taste it. I'm going to have to get this into my palate. Um, <clears throat> because uh, there's something about the burn that's, that you got to get through to really start to take in some of the complexity. Um, that a good bourbon like this has. So I think that that creme brulee flavor that you were uh, mentioning, it's even more prominent in this one. You know, like, I mean, this is like, to me, like I said, it's a very, it's, it's, it's a lot more concentrated than the, uh, the small batch, partially because of the um, alcohol content, but then also it's out of the same barrel, right? It's not blended. Right. No blend to this one. Yeah. Well, no more talk. Cheers. Let's get into this sucker. Cheers. Wow. Cheers. Wow. 61%. And <laughs> it's a little hot. It, it, um, it's definitely a 61%er, but yeah. there's so much complexity. There's so oh, much yeah. complexity around it. Like, <clears throat> wow. So. I'm getting that base s. I'm getting that like base essence. I want to say of the Elijah Craig small batch. I get that baking spice. I get that citrus. I get the clove. Yep. yep. But then there's I don't know. There's something. Oh, vanilla. Yeah, but it's. Oh. This is this is a great this is a great bourbon. Caramel, caramel. There's just like a depth. Like there's an added. Right. Depth. It's like a very concentrated. There's like. I think, I think what I you know. mean is it's full body. There you go. I like sure. that. Full body. I like that. Oh, BJ, thank you for the full bodied comments. Oh, yes. <laughs> this bourbon is quite full bodied. Full bodied. Mm, and... Pinkies up, as I say. It's full bodied, ladies and gentlemen. Is that the preferred right, way so, to drink bourbon? So Zach said he's getting some bananas in the uh, in the small batch. Yeah. So for those of us that have had the uh, the, the thrill of, uh, of drinking a great brewery beer called Foster's Happiness. Oh yeah. Can make a comparison here. This right here. So Foster's Happiness is this beautiful uh, imperial stout back to a bananas foster yep. you know finished with that with that bourbon um to me like this is all those bourbon feels that is in that beer uh that gives that beer such it's it's heat and all of its bourbon quality yeah i, I get that I, I get all of that out of this uh, i'm getting that banana foster spices bananas yeah. cinnamon burnt sugar i mean you've like really put the fire to this and really condensed a lot of flavor. Um, that is an amazing comparison. I get that out of this. That is really cool. I like that. I'm imagining that right now. Holy. What? And then, I don't know what these are, but I'm picturing them. What are those little red, chewy, gummy cinnamon candies? Gummy bears. No. <laughs> uh, they're, uh, hot they're, something? Hot tamales? Um, well, yeah, there's hot tamales. Hot tamales. The ones you get at like the movie theater when you're like hot at the tamales. five hot tamales. Hot tamales, yeah. I get a little of that hot tamale taste, that like sugary yeah. cinnamon. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because I think with that ethanol, you you get so you get that base small batch, like essence. Like I said earlier, you get that like foundation of the small batch. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think that ethanol adds that complexity and and intensifies. <clears throat> A lot of what was in small batch really gives it that body, that full body <laughs> that feel. Full body. Gives it that John Cena oiled body. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, that's amazing. I love this. Uh, uh, so both of these are great. They are. They are. They are. And that. And that's why, you know, the first show we had where I'm like, oh, you know, I compare this to Elijah Craig because blah 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 blah. This is something that any of the viewers out there can go pick up, 
go to the liquor store, go to even like a grocery store and find Elijah Craig. And it's so underrated. Right. Like it, it's, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, my grandpa used to drink that. You know, my uncles drink it. And, you know, they're sitting in the trailer park or whatever, whatever. Don't listen to any of this malarkey. Go out there, spend 30 bucks, get a bottle of small batch. And if even if it's your first bourbon, it's a fantastic introduction to bourbon <clears throat> to where you can sit and drink it neat and have one, two, three of them feel great. And there's no regrets, no ragrats yeah. at all. And you can, and you, yeah, as a, um, you know, a novice uh, bourbon drinker, you can really pick apart all of these smells that you're smelling, yeah. the flavors that you're tasting. And, um, you know, go to the website, ask, you know, look, look and see what they suggest. This, yeah. is what, this is what the flavor you may be tasting. And that's a great, smelling, that's a, know? it's a great point. So to Zach's point, the Elijah Craig website, we checked it out earlier. Um, they have like this whole, like this cool flavor profile chart where it's like, here's what you'll get on the, the nose, which is like the smell. And here's what you get on the palate, which is the taste. And here's what you get, like the after, like the aftertaste. And it's like. They put pictures of, you know, little hokey pictures, whatever, of like an orange or like a cinnamon <laughs> stick, you know, yep. stuff like that, a vanilla bean. And, and that kind of guides you, right? Yeah, because from a, from a palate perspective, from a taste perspective, you need to train your palate. So if any of you out there, um, you know, or even between us, I don't know if I've ever told this story, but you, it's like wine. You don't just taste this stuff and you're like oh it tastes of chalkboard and you know raw uh, leather and rich I mahogany love, I, love chalkboard. I don't know why i said that but <laughs> here's the thing is that what ripple tastes like like old leather like the best way to teach your palate flavors is to read about something find out what it already is supposed to taste like and then you pick out those flavors yourself and then your brain ends up associating those those flavors mm -hmm. to where you'll pick it up moving forward. Like we've been at this for years, amateur drinking, oh. right? And <laughs> you're very that. like Barney from <laughs> Moe's in the Simpsons over there. Like you're just well, they're, pounding that barrel proof. I think, yeah. I think that's out of, uh, out of joy, you know, just like, sure. Oh. That's, that's a joy moan. That was a joy moan. We get your, oh. we, we're, we've been getting your little like moans over there. <laughs> so anyway, Oh, cut it. Okay. We're going to, we're going to cut it. So cutting for those who don't know, you're going to add a little bit of water and what you want to do. Normally you add, and we're not going to be like pretentious and have like little water stoppers, but a cap full of bottled water is usually perfect and you can usually eyeball it. So some people do a cap, just a little dash of water. Drip, 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 drip. Exactly. And what that'll do is that'll, that'll change the flavor and smell profile quite a bit. So and the uh, viscosity of the mouth. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well. Yeah. So actually it, what's weird is it thickens it up. It can, it can in some instances. Well, that's how, that's what yeah. I've experienced before, but let's see what this tastes like. Yep. So I'm going to go with smell first. So I get a lot more like creme brulee. So it's getting a bit more sweeter. So more, I think after you add the water. A little more vanilla. Yeah, it tones down that cinnamon and citrus kind of go away. Yeah. Agreed. And it becomes way more kind of <laughs> yeah, like dessert-like, which is good, obviously. Vanilla, brings out custard. brings a lot of the oakiness. I think you get a lot of the cask. Barrel. Kind of that oak char. Mm -hmm. Really comes through. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cutting it. Yeah. Giving, giving it a, a cap, cap of water. Yeah. That, that really, is so much better. Wow. Totally it's opens so it up. so much better. Totally opens it up. And, and then maybe because... Because I don't know exactly the scientific method behind it, but the cutting it with that water brings down that ethanol, right? Because yeah. that ethanol is probably the most, which is the alcohol for those that, that don't know. That alcohol is the strongest part of that. And you've got to 
jump past that alcohol, astringent, rubbing alcohol, like kind of smell and taste. And the burn. To, and the yeah. burn to get into the flavors. Right. So when you add the water, cuts that immediately. Yeah. And you get like way, way, so much more complexity. Way more. Yeah. And how do you and smell again? Dessert. Left or right? Mouth open? Yeah, so left, yeah, we can go, we can go into that. I mean, we go into it almost every show now that we've, few shows now. Um, don't smell something and go right into it, like, balls deep, yeah. as they say. Don't, like, just jump right into something and smell it. You're going to, like, burn your nostrils. I'm sure everyone's done it before. I've done it many a times because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And they're like, oh, smell this. It's amazing. And you're like, what the hell? And you just basically burn your no hairs in your nostril and... No, you, you smell the ethanol. You don't really you smell. The first time you burn your nut hairs. You burn exactly. your nut hairs. <laughs> so what you're supposed to do is take it left to right or right to left when you're smelling. Mouth open. Mouth open and mouth closed. You do both. Because your brain associates different smells with your different nostrils, right? Well, it's not only that, but also your, you know, the 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 nostril, like the nasal passage isn't equidistance to your brain where like the sensors are for your smells. So your nostrils will actually pick up, you know, your left and right will pick up different smells. And a lot of people don't know that they just like jump right in and they're like, Oh, cool. Oh yeah. They, I, I kind of get this and this. No, they, they but, fake it and they don't even know. Yeah, exactly. But if you do, and I just learned this recently, like within the past six months, you do a left to right, like a, and you just smell the whole duration. So yeah, and you can tell the difference quite a bit. It's crazy. Like, you'd be surprised on how mm -hmm. you just can go. changing the way you smell something completely adds a new depth to everything. Yeah, you can go caramel over here and then end up with vanilla over here or citrus so, or whatever it is. You, this question, and I'll pose this to both of you. Would you make this barrel proof a pre-dinner cocktail or an after-dinner cocktail? Easy answer. I would say after. Absolutely. This, I, I, this could be a pre. Small batch is a pre. A heavy hitter ABV, that's an after-dinner. That's like a... <laughs> our bow, exactly. Or both. Yeah. Staff Squatch <laughs> says both, of how course. Much, how much do yeah. you love that? Yeah, They could be both. That's a really good question. BJ. But but if you're could just having a few appetizers and you just need to you know wet the whistle and get the party started, just start with the small batch. Don't jump right into the barrel proof because I, I think that, and there's reasoning behind it. I'm not saying that, you know, one is better than the other. But in my personal opinion, I think with the small batch, it's a slow lead in, mm -hmm. you know, you can enjoy like some smells and complexity, eat a few snicky snacks. That's going to add some like oils and whatnot to your palate. So when you do jump into the barrel proof, say <clears throat> post, you know, post meal that, you know, you're going to have a nice heavy hitter ABV after your meal. And the small batches. What's your thought good. process? I mean, what are you yeah. thinking over there? Am I completely off on that or? I, I would reverse it. I, I wow. I would take. <laughs> as my aperitivo, my aperitif, I would uh, definitely have this to stand up to a big meal, um, you know, especially after, like on Friday, it's been a tough week, you know, something to really punch you in the palate, get you prepped, uh, and then I would probably deal with that small batch as something delicate and, uh, and easy to drink afterwards to really, so that's you know, yeah, ease you into the end of the meal well, and, not, and call it a night. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I mean, and that's fair. I mean, to each his own. I'm going to tell you right now, all of these opinions, everybody's going to have their own on everything that we drink. You know, there's so many of these, like, um, you know, very famous people in the, the whiskey, bourbon, alcohol industry in general that are like, you know, they have this education of like their certified whiskey tasters and, and judges and you know they they throw you know you get jim murray who makes the whiskey bible every year for the past x amount of years and everybody swears it's like you know it's his way or the highway with his I'll reviews tell right now, wrong, <laughs> i'll tell you right now dad's hat is not where it's at <laughs> <laughs> I totally hear you there. Like a dad's hat, which uh, I think that's oh, out of Pennsylvania. No, 
Um, Dad's hat is dog shit. And he says it's it's like double gold. He rates it like one of the wow. highest. Like, no. Yeah. See, it's great to have uh, your own opinion about uh, whiskey. Yeah, about your, it's gross. It's, it's good to have your own opinion. Because then you can it, say you don't you disagree with somebody else, right? You can also see the other mm-hmm. side of the, the story where you can think, oh, okay, well, maybe I would drink this before dinner, maybe not after dinner. Yeah, and, and not to be like a conspiracy theorist, but, you know, he could be a shill and he could be paid by some of these companies to, you know, I'm sure maybe dad's hat gives him a call and says, hey, hey, Jim Murray, we're going to we're going to throw you a little donation towards your organization. And they cut some check for like 100 grand. And they're like, oh, by the way, with this donation, we're going to throw in the latest barrel proof bottle of dad's hat. Tell us what you think. What do you think he's going to do? Shit on it? Yeah. No. I am thinking about going to buy a bottle of Dad's hat. Would that be... I, 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 I want to do a Dad's hat episode. Yeah. Um, it's It has a reputation, um, and it's old, as in it's been around for 100 years. I'd like to try it's it. It's what? Pennsylvania. It's from Pennsylvania. Yeah, it is from Pennsylvania. So it's whiskey, not a bourbon. Not a bourbon. That is correct, for those that don't know. To be a bourbon, you have to be in Kentucky, Bourbon County, specifically. Yep. There's very strict government rules around being classified as bourbon. Uh, however, uh, especially within the past 10 years, distilleries are popping up all over the place. Uh, and what a lot of places are doing um, is taking like a base whiskey made by some giant conglomerate. And one of the biggest ones is in Indiana, and it's called... Midwestern Grain Products, very generic name, uh, otherwise known as MGP. And those in kind of like the no call it M- MGP juice. And they just churn out some giant mega factory, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of gallons of whiskey. And what these small distilleries around the country <clears throat> do is that they just buy 50 barrels of MGP They bring it into their distillery in their hometown, and then they will either add their own little twists, so they'll add their own maybe, like, herbs and spices, like, I guess, the Kentucky's original, I don't know. No, they add their own, like, spin to (laughs) it. They char char a barrel, or they take an old port wine barrel, or a Madeira barrel from wine, or a cab barrel, and then they throw that MGP juice in it, they age it for X amount of time, and then they bottle it, and they can call it their own. They can be like, oh, you know, this is Billy Joe Bob's two-year port whiskey. But it's all coming from the same But it's product. all, the base is all coming from MGP. So I, I remember, sorry, go on. No, no, no. I mean, that's how most of these craft distilleries have started, and that's how they still operate right now. What's funny is I remember we, we did a whiskey tasting at one point in time at, uh, for, uh, I believe it was uh, for Jack Daniels. And I yeah. remember we had a sample of the MGP. We did. Yeah. And it's yeah. basically, it's clear um, clear uh, alcohol. I mean, it's it's got a whiskey tinge to it. Like essence. Yeah, but, they, I mean, it's nothing like, you know, there, there's no... There's no uh, citrus flavor to it. There's no well, it, vanilla. It, a barrel completely changes it because right. you're basically taking moonshine to an extent, white lightning. Yeah, it's just and a raw product. It's a raw product that's a distilled grain alcohol yeah. that's then being put into a barrel, and the barrel is what adds that complexity, that color, um, and all those other essences. What really makes it a bourbon. Exactly. And and there's tons of varying factors. And I know we talked about this. We touched base on it before. But, you know, temperature, you know, when alcohol, when the, when the, when the alcohol, exactly. When the, when the, it's a Sasquatch, exactly. Yeah, commercial white lightning. lightning. Exactly. We got some, but we're not drinking it tonight. Is it called so, Everclear? It's not Everclear. I mean, it's just called white lightning. So when some of that. You know, when they, when, they, when they char a barrel, so, like, the process will go into really briefly. So they'll take some of that MGP juice, they'll take some of that distilled grain alcohol, and they want to turn it into a whiskey. So what they do is they char the barrel. They Literally, it's like a flamethrower that chars these barrels on the inside. You better. 
Oh, and I'm sure that's probably made. Um, Stash Squatch says he has some from Maine. He'll come visit. Um, I'm sure that that's probably made on some farm in some backwoods. I mean, here's the thing. You guys have Whistle Pig. You have Whistle Pig in Vermont, which is probably one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. And I'm going to do a little bit of um, flexing and show a bottle <laughs> of Whistle Pig. <laughs> I have one of the best store picks of Whistle Pig. And this is a Vegas pick of, uh, it's a single barrel pie from Whistle Pig. And it's got a nice sticker on there from uh, one of everyone's favorite Vegas movie. The Hangover. The Hangover. And we'll do, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do an episode with that for sure. Uh, and we'll compare it to the Tenure whiskey and we'll... Uh, We'll see how that single barrel stands up. But I've already talked to some people, and they're like, it's amazing. So I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've had the um, some of the Whistle Pig 18, the Whistle Pig 15 uh, have been up to Whistle Pig in Vermont. It's just super tasty. So um, take a tour of the uh, to, to tell to tell it uh, sort of. They just had their shop open. They didn't have like the distillery open. But Statue, if you get a chance, go to Vermont, find Whistle Pig. Uh, do a little drive up there and, and take the distillery tour. Definitely won't regret it if you haven't been up there already. So back to the process. We were talking about... Um, yeah, that's awesome. Go. Let us know. Like, report back. Yeah, we want peaches. We want to see... We want next see Thursday. Every... We do our show every Thursday. So you're going to have to report back next Thursday and we'll... 7 p.m. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get you on the stream. Once we have BJ in person, we'll then put uh, Statue on uh, FaceTime. Right. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, Statchel. That would be great. Cheers. 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 Cheers, gentlemen. Statchel and uh, Whistle Pig. So going back to the process, so you're charring this barrel, and you're then dumping the product, the, the product inside MG. it, and then you're putting it on a rick, which I know we talked about already. And it's basically the little slanted wood thing where it rests on the barrel. Like a shelf. In a warehouse. It's, it's a shelf. A slanted shelf. And there's a lot of factors that go into what happens over the next year, two years, three years, five years, ten years, fifty years, whatever. I You know, and I was thinking about this the other day. I can't wait till there's a hundred-year whiskey. Oh, wow. Or, How you, awesome would that be? Think about that. Because we have stuff that's in, like, I think the 60s and 70s year um i think port ellen it's we're, i'm going into scotch very briefly yeah um there's some scotland barrels that are from the 30s and 40s for the original makers gone yeah, yeah. um but i think we're coming on 100 years pretty soon we're gonna be able to find a hundred year scotch or whiskey that's crazy to think that i mean they they, they have some pre-world war ii uh scotches yeah. like in uh, some of the liquor stores around town yeah but absolutely they're, but they're all going for yeah, like dollars. some stupid prices. I mean, not to deviate from the explanation of barrels, but uh, you can pick up um, Total Wine, if anybody has Total Wine. They're one of the big boxes out here in Nevada and Vegas. Um, they have some blends of scotches and whiskeys. You can get, they have a 30-year, like, store blend that only runs, like, 160 bucks. So with the current um, taxation on scotch and how it's, um, gone up in price, as most of you have probably seen in the past six months. Um, scotch, whiskey has gone up drastically. Anything that's imported um, has gone up drastically in price. There's a lot of tariffs now on uh, on scotch. So that's not just because of the popularity and like so the hipster can movement. I, I'm jump in yeah. On this. yeah, yeah. Because there's some really creative stuff that some of the distilleries are doing to get around that. Um, one is, so you're probably familiar with the Glen Morangi. Yeah, um, love Glen Morangi. So they have just come out with a subsidiary distillery that is putting out basically the Glen Morangi at a lower ABV to get underneath the tariff percentage. Oh. Um, and you're getting, a, basically it's just a, a low percentage Glen Morangi. Uh, at eighteen dollars a bottle at Total Wine right now. Really? And, and it's really interesting stuff. It's been aged in really cool casks like Port 
casks, uh, Saturn's casks, yeah. Burgundy casks. It's really, really cool stuff. Uh, it's called, uh, I think it's called like Queen's Park or something like that. Okay. You just ask, just ask your total wine person about it. They will know exactly what it is. Huh. And they'll be like, yeah, you can't get them for bucks, but you can. Yeah. Uh, and it's really, really cool. So just talk to some of your, some of your, what's going on and they can hook you up with stuff that you'd normally pay 60 to 80 for, uh, but that you can get for much, much less, uh, at a little, a little less APV, uh, because they're trying to get underneath the tariff cost. Great. That's really good to know. And, you know, I was just stumbling, you know, upon some scotch recently and, one price that always used to like stick in my head was Macallan 18. Ugh. So, uh, okay, I, it's, not a fan. it's <laughs> some people it's very polarizing because it's of its delicious, but it's, not for it's like blue label, all right? It, it's in that same category of like it's about the hype, it's about the name recognition. And what happens is, you know, blue label People usually just get it as gifts, right? You know, Blue Label and Macallan 18. Well, they don't even know what it tastes like. Either. Exactly. They, How they say, oh, he's a whiskey drinker or a scotch drinker. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's his birthday. Get him a Mac 18. Yeah, what's or it's the his best birthday, one? The Blue the one? Blue Label. Okay, the yeah, Blue yeah, one. Exactly. But, and, and I'm not saying they taste amazing, but I, I actually, I love Mac 18, even though some people will fight me on that. That's fine. Uh, I don't like Blue Label, though. Blue Label is, is a blended hot pile of steaming garbage. But I'm not, <laughs> we'll go into that another day. However, the point of this is, is that I remember when I bought my first bottle of Mac 18, probably like within 10 years ago, and they, it was $129.99, right? Mac 18. Mac 18. So I've kind of always used that as like a primer, like a base for like when I go look at it in the store. I was at Total Wine a couple weeks ago. And it was um, two sixty nine for the Mac moly. eighteen. Is that because of the tariffs or because of I, the yeah? Hype? It was the tariffs and the hype. What do you have here? What what is this? I thought I had Macallan eighteen, but it's a twelve. But he's like, no, uh, it's a Dewar's white. It's a Dewar's. It's a Dewar's, no. white. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Dewar's aka I, Sewers. I've got, I've got a Mac 12. <laughs> okay, Mac twelve. Hey, and don't get me wrong, Mac 12 is a great base. Mac is 12 is like a good daily scotch. I get a feeling that was a gift to you. Oh. Plus, we need to drink this next week. Is that the smoke wagon? That is yes. smoke wagon. I like that one. I am a it fan. So, so for those that... It is. So for those that don't know, smoke wagon is very new to Nevada. It is a Nevada distillery. They opened up, I believe, they've only been opened up for a few years. I want to say 2016 for some reason. Um, we're getting away from Scotch. Stash asking, what about Double Black? We're, we're done with Johnny Walker. We're done with Johnny Walker. I've never had a Double Black. I don't even know. I have some Double Black. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll do a Scotch night. What do you have? Oh, is that Midwinter's Night Dram? Oh, yes. X7. Uh, well, definitely. So that's that's a holiday. That's like a holiday show. This is a holiday show because it has that classic Christmas spice uh, flavor. Do I have the same one? Yeah, I think you have the same, same one. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say if we have a different it's act, Christmas. that'd be kind of interesting. Christmas in a bottle. Right. So, so to kind of um, give a little shout out to Smoke Wagon. So they're a Nevada local distillery. They've only been open for, I want to say, 2016. So four or five years. And they are one of these distilleries, prime example of a distillery that has taken MGP juice, so the Midwestern grain products juice from Indiana. They bring it to Nevada, put it in barrels, age it for a couple years, and they won countless awards already at the International San Francisco International Whiskey Awards. Some, you know, some random, I don't know. One of the big ones. One of the big players, they've won like, Double gold, triple gold, double gold, year after year over the past like two years in California. Which version of the of the, uh, the smoke wagon was that? I think the uncut. The, so uncut? The, the uncut. Uncut, unfiltered. They have a couple versions of it, but it doesn't matter because to be honest, I think all of them taste spectacular. Okay. And they have super limited distribution. So I've only seen them 
on the West Coast because it's a hole in the wall. The distillery is tiny. Right. I think that guy, he's it's like a one man show over there. I it's just him. I follow him. You can follow him on Facebook and Instagram on social media, Smoke Wagon Distillery. Um, and, and he posts like him, like bottling by himself, like the smoke wagon. And it's spectacular. Um, very good. Much in abundance. In Las we Vegas. can get bottles. So if any of you out there want a bottle, we can talk about a little trade. Definitely can ship something out to you. Just let me know. Um, let us know. And, uh, yeah, we can, that's one great advantage is that we have access to smoke wagon. Um, and I don't have. I don't have a bottle handy, unfortunately. But I think BJ did. He showed. Yeah, it. BJ had he showed one. It. It's BJ, kind of hard to see. Yeah, but it is. We'll unfold. we'll get it on the show. <clears throat> there you go. Look beautiful, at that view. beautiful gold uncut smoke wagon. Heck yeah! Satchel says, "Hell yeah!" Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. So crazy good, crazy good. Um. I don't know. He looks like he's raising his hand. We'll give him a second. Raises his hand and there's a dude sign. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back and send it over. Send it over. One. Yeah, we'll send I'll send you a smoke wagon, man. Definitely. Um going back to the barrels, right? So MGP juice, you get you say you get it sent all over the United States, obviously. So these distillers, one thing you need to know is that Barrels, barrel aging, the barrel aging process behaves differently based on your climate, whatever weather and whatever zone you're in. Um, and specifically in the desert, I'll use smoke wagon as a prime example where it's very hot. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Zach's grabbing us some water. Smoke wagon, it's hot. We're in the desert. So what that does is that hot temperature... <laughs> And it's the desert, so it's hot during the day, somewhat cool at night. What that does is that causes a barrel to what they call breathe. It breathes, breathes more. It contracts. And we already, we already, we already, BJ, I was ready for you to do your contraction motion. There we go. Oh, was that, was that like that? So, so it, the wood yeah. breathes like based this. on that and then in and out. Warm. Cold, warm, cold, warm, warm cold. Cold, warm, cold. So these fluctuations in the temperature pull that juice in and out of the wood, out of the barrels. And all the flavor of a bourbon and whiskey come from the barrel. We have a lot of extremes in Vegas, too. Exactly. So, so that's my point. I mean, like in the winter, so, in the winter it does get gets cold, decently cold. And then summer, it gets hot. Hot as hell. It gets cold, and then, but it's a desert. So like even during the summer... It'll get hot. It'll be like 110 degrees, but then at night it gets down to like 75. Right. Strange. So what that does, you get that contraction, and the more that that liquid is going in and out of that barrel, the more flavor it's picking up. There you go. Perfect yeah. example. Cool. You have Smoke Wagon, new distillery in Nevada. They're one of the few. They're one of the few. There's kind of my hand how many distilleries there are in Nevada that are winning awards because they're killing it with their barrel aged product. Because of our weather deviations. But it, the thing you need to know is that even though you fill up a barrel, you have evaporation. So even though there's alcohol sitting in a barrel, hey, look at that. You beat me to the punch, Stash. You just asked, do you think they have to top off for evap? They absolutely do. So from the last um, lot, like Instagram video Smoke Wagon posted... I remember him saying that 60% is lost in the aging process in a barrel, which is crazy. That's crazy. That's insane. So, well, like with the dry climate, you know, like this, I mean, how would that's you, it. I mean, how would you compare it? Say like, uh, you know, from here versus uh, what's in uh, Bourbon County, you know, how, 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 Oh, it's totally different. Yeah. What do you, what do you think the EVAP uh, percentage is? Very there? low. Very low, maybe 10, 20%. You know, here, super dry. There, right. Kentucky, very, humid. very humid. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's up in the hills. Exactly. So it's, that's a prime example. So Stat Squatch says better concentration of taste. Absolutely. So, so the with that evaporation, years. you're getting that, that, that remaining liquid going in and out so much out of the barrel that you're getting that concentrated flavor, that complexity of flavor. Um, but you're losing 60% of your alcohol 
that's going to impact cost. Um, I still think Smoke Wagon is a young enough distillery where they're very conscious of their price point. And even their uncut is how much? Sixty five seventy. Yeah, about they 70 bucks. Filtered was nine. No. Actually, what did we see the other day? So like Desert the- Jewel. So Desert Jewel is their 12 year, which is 90. They had an unfiltered for like 45. Yeah, I think we, we were at uh, Total Wine the other day. Yeah, yeah, and the like the the introductory bottle, which is going to be amazing, thirty, I, I, 30 bucks. Thirty bucks. I, I haven't even had it yet. We need. To, I haven't had it either. Like one, should we do it on the next show? Who next knows? show we're gonna do Smoke Wagon because we're talking about it. I talked about it the two shows ago. I think with we're, Elijah Craig. Yeah. Next Thursday we're doing Smoke Wagon. I'm gonna get them all. Yep. So. Really quick, jumping into Smoke Wagon, they do a basic like thirty dollar bottle. It's like their small batch. They do a uncut, unfiltered, which we're arguing about the price. I really don't remember what it is. I want to say seventy. I think it changed. I think we saw it at like forty five. All That's right, weird. maybe or maybe it changed. Whatever. But then they have Desert Jewel, which is that blue and silver white label, which I think is their eight year. Okay. And then they have Store Pick Single Barrel, which is a twelve year. Which I think I'm the only one that has a bottle of that, but we'll break it open. I don't give a shit. We'll I have break two it open. Of them. I got the uh, the uncut, unfiltered, and then also the um, the introductory. So, yeah, it's gonna be a yeah. Smoke. We'll see. Statch, gonna, Statch is asking to invite the distiller and see if they're interested in joining. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that we're big enough for that. We're on our second episode here. But we, I mean, eventually, sure. We actually had kind of conversations about having uh, you know, doing like uh, yeah. we did. Yeah, doing um, like interviews, maybe just like a and A session, whatever it is. Yeah. Maybe even doing a tour. Um, I know Smoke Wagon is definitely not That's not right. open yeah. not open to the pro not op- open to the That's public, right. but you know it'd be kind of cool to go and uh, see the distillery if it uh, would be if the distiller is. You know, if he says, hey, come on over, the Barrel Buddies. Yeah, I the mean. The Barrel Buddies are here. The Barrel Let's Buddies are here. Let's uh, send them over. I mean, I and I'm not asking for a handout, but if we can take a little GoPro over there and do a stream. Uh, oh, heck yeah. That's exactly it. I mean, I'm all about it. So we'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see exactly. <laughs> of course, you know. How right. else do you become successful? Exactly. You know? Exactly. You lie. <laughs> right. You lie. <laughs> So we are three millionaires from <laughs> <laughs> not from Nevada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who are interested in your brewery exactly. or your, your distillery. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so speaking of, so we're talking next, next episode. It seems like we're coming to the end of this episode, huh? Um, I, I, I'm thinking we can pull another 30 minutes unless, uh, what are you guys feeling? Unless you got somewhere to go. I don't, I can do another 30 quarantined i'm good okay yeah yeah i mean i i'm still i think we're all kind of uh figuring out what what the best uh streaming time is um we've actually stepped up our view count i'm gonna say it took about a good 30 minutes before we really started like building people up well Um, i mean once we get people uh subscribing subscribe all of you yes subscribe Um, if you're not a subscriber you will get the notification once we go yeah, once we go live, you will be notified. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so good stuff. But yeah, no, I, 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 I but I but I think that we're we're probably we have enough conversations. I think we can pull off a two hour show every Thursday. I love it. I'm just I'm hanging out. Yeah. You're I mean it's out? it's what we would do anyway without the audience. Like just to give everyone a quick rundown, like, oh look at that, we got a follower, a little statch squatch. I thought he was already following. I thought he was already following. He's double following. Now. He's double following now. So yeah, like we we thought about like the barrel buddies because we've probably been us three. So myself, um, Zach, and BJ, um, just drinking like good beers, whiskeys, and having good conversation for at least the past year, two years, right? Yeah. At least. Why not invite the internet? Yeah, so, you know, we have these awesome conversations around, uh, you know, fireside chats, and we're like, let's just get it out there and stream it. Why not? And and have some involvement from our friends, from our family, from all these other random people mm. that we can just 
crack open a whiskey together and have some kind of good conversation with people. Yeah, join from your home. Oh, we- hello, KJ. Welcome. Hello. KJ said she just got here. Uh, what are we drinking? I have a new bottle of Blanton's. Whoa. I haven't opened. Oh. Cheers to the Blanton's. I'm surprised. It's very rare. Well, I'm not going to say very rare, but it's tough to find yeah, a bottle you, of Blanton's. Yeah, it's it, it's very hard to run into. Like uh, the, the two that I found that I've ran into, yeah. they, they were by mistake. Yeah. So tonight, just to give a little recap, we are drinking the two base Elijah Craig's. So we are drinking Elijah Craig's small batch, which is a little out of focus there. Oh. Whatever. That's fine. And uh, the the next kind of level up from Elijah Craig's small batch is the Elijah Craig barrel proof. Barrel proof. So I know I talked on the first show, and I think you were there, KJ. We we kind of referenced a lot of Elijah Craig because we drank we were at the at the time we were drinking that Garrison Brothers, which was a hundred and fifty dollar whiskey, not easy to get. First show, we were just kind of like flexing a little bit. That's dropped some big guns and drank some really good whiskey. But I kept referring to Elijah Craig and. Elijah Craig is probably the most easily obtainable, affordable whiskey bourbon that you can get. And it's a good, it's a good, and it's wh- good. It's a it gr- is so yeah. good. A great bourbon yeah. to start with, like a great bourbon to uh, to be able to understand and learn about bourbon. Exactly. What, 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 the, you know, a great way to pick out flavors the way, when it comes to the smell. Yeah. How do you smell it, left to right? And then also, like when you're when you're tasting it, you know, you can also you can read the website. And they can tell you, okay, this is what you should be tasting. Yep. But you can also, you know, determine that for yourself. So, you know, the website says, it smells like orange, right? We say, eh, it smells like citrus and maybe yeah. banana, right? Yep. And so, um, yeah, you know, it's a good, there's a lot of, lot of great complexity to this guy, even yeah. more on this guy, too. And, and you can get it anywhere. So with small batch, you can find it like your Albertsons, your Ralphs, your grocery stores, you know, your whatever. And Ralphs? Hey, Ralphs. I'm trying to like Ralphs. cater to some people. Your Kroger. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. There's grocery stores that we need to cater to all audiences. What, what I'm, okay. Your Piggly Wiggly, your hey. local Piggly Wiggly should what? have Elijah Craig. What, I, what I'm imagining right now. What I'm imagining right now is the dude writing the, the check, check at for, Ralph's for 69 cents for, for a for his cream or for, what is for, it? His, for, no, his first half gallon of milk. The, no, it wasn't milk. Oh, it cream. was half and half. Oh, oh half and half for the, the white uh, Russian. For the white Russian. The white. Yes, <laughs> there it is. Great. Awesome. <laughs> The dude, and, and he has the milk mustache because he was drinking the uh, the half and half. Right after that movie, first time, <laughs> the, the, the next time I went to California, I had to go to a Ralph's, and I'm like, it's a grocery store, right? Man. But back back to the point of the story is that Elijah Craig small batch, you can definitely get anywhere. That's the starter, Elijah Craig. Um, so it's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, <sighs> In Vegas, you're probably going to have to go to a Lee's or a liquor outlet or a liquor world um, to get it. That's going to run you 70 bucks. Um, but I would recommend starting with the small batch if you haven't had an Elijah Craig before. It's an easy introduction. Easy introduction. Um, tons of complexity for $30. I don't even know how they get away with that price point. Like, Seriously. No, that's a great I, I can't, I can't tell really... you. I, yeah, and I cannot tell the entire audience, like, how many bourbons or artisanal whiskeys that i've had in that like 40 to 100 dollar price point that are garbage yeah, right garbage garbage this is one of the originals and you know elijah craig comes through hell yeah. i'll even say wild turkey comes through like we're gonna have a we're gonna we're gonna drink we're gonna dive into that oh, as the Rus- these shows progress the russell's reserve Man. russell's reserve jack you know there's some jack daniels out there that are amazing heritage barrel That'd First be, one that comes to mind. It'd be great to find all of these different bottles that I think people have uh, perceptions of because somebody said, oh, I didn't like that, or I like this, or whatever it is. But Or it's it, cheap, and uh, nobody drinks that. Yeah. Or okay. I only drink this mixed with Coke. Right. And see? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, like a, say like a bottle of Hancock's, right? 
Oh, you know, yeah. It, it, it's, what, 30 bucks, right? Yeah. And it, it's got a gold label on it, and it looks And cheap. it's shitty. It looks shitty. It, look, it, it, it is very, very... Like, the, the presentation is awful, right? But yeah. it's a great whiskey. Yeah. I enjoy it. So I'm still on this barrel proof. I don't know if any of you still have a little bit left here, but... I poured another one. Yeah, this is this is so... <laughs> I can't get enough of man, it. I'm a fan. Like, it's tasty. Yeah. Definite thumbs up on Elijah Craig. This guy, this guy. Yeah. I like so if so let's let's go around to each of us. And I think I know the answer, but maybe not. What do you prefer out of the two? So BJ, I'm gonna put you on the spot and we're gonna start with you. Barrel proof. Um, the barrel proof is one of my all time like I I already said it, but I'll say it again. Uh, Barrel Proof is in my top five bourbons. Uh, super, super tasty. Very, very, very good. Uh, highly, highly recommend. Any particular reason besides that? You just like it? Or, like, uh, what stands it out? So, I like the, uh, I like the high age. Um, I think for having a high age, it makes it, uh, it's still very approachable. I think it's something that um, a lot of people will still really appreciate and find an appreciation for. Um, you know, I think a lot. I think a lot of people get scared off by the heat uh, of a high ABV bourbon. Yeah. Uh, but this has a nice complex flavor. Uh, it's not all about you know the, the liquor. It's not a you know soup. It's not a get you drunk and just drink it to get drunk. You know, it's, it's oh shots you drink oh, really for real. And yeah. um, you don't shoot this. Yeah, no, 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 no. But it's, you know, it, it's something that's high class that I, I think you can sit back and enjoy. Um, I actually would be really interested to, to maybe mix that up in a uh, uh, an old fashioned or even a, a Manhattan. Um, I think that. that it could be a, a pretty, pretty good Manhattan. So we had a little pregame the other night where we... <laughs> We wanted to intro these before the show just to kind of like, you know, make sure everything lined up with what we were, were what was reading and we want to get an idea for the show. Right. Yeah. And we made some uh, old fashions with small batch. Oh, and that was That's a good. and that was a suggestion for the show. That was. Uh, but we they were do, fantastic. We could do what do you what do you think about a demonstration? We there? could do a an, a live Old fashioned demo or a prohibition era old fashioned maybe. prohibition era old fashioned. So what <laughs> what Elijah Craig would would you prefer? I mean, we had I believe we we used this guy last time. We use small batch. I'm not opposed to making the old fashioned with barrel proof. I think that Do would it. okay. Do it. What do you say? All right, I'm gonna have to ask you to pardon me while I get by. I'm yep. gonna get the glasses ready. Zach will keep talking. BJ, yep. you guys keep. Chatting, I'm gonna get our glasses ready. There we go. Yeah. So I, it's really, it's really hard. I mean, like, because both of them are so amazing. Um, uh, I, I had, I, I hadn't had Elijah Craig beforehand, right? Uh, I'm decently new to, uh, to 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 whiskey or to, I'm sorry, to bourbon, but. When I had it the other night, I said, wow, this is great. You can smell the flavors, taste the flavors. You can pick them all out and everything, right? And then once you move over to the barrel proof, um, everything just seemed to be a lot more richer, a lot more intense, a lot more concentrated, right? And so if I were, if somebody put two bottles in front of me and said, which one do you want to drink or which one can I give you? I would have to go with the barrel proof. Yeah. And uh, j just because of that, because it makes, so this is like the big brother to this guy. Yeah. And, and that, that I enjoy, I, I enjoy both of them very equally, but if I had to pick, I would say the, uh, the barrel proof. So, but yeah, no, it's amazing. It's great, great whisk or great bourbon. I keep Real trying quick, to say whiskey, uh, but so bourbon. Barrel proof or the Balmora from two 
So go. Oh, barrel proof. 100%. I'm with you on that. 100%. So Balmora was good, but Balmora was hot as all hell. And, uh, and I don't, and I don't think, I, I think with the Balmora, it was, it, it wasn't as complex. I think with, um, with the, with the Elijah Craig, you could really pick out flavors, smell them, drink them. I mean, taste them, everything. I mean, you could really, um, get into it. I thought that the Balmora had way too much ethanol to it. Um, I don't know. That's my personal opinion, but. Maybe it's just the difference between a bourbon and a whiskey. Yeah. As we, as we kind of trek through this, that might just be the difference in preference between, you know, a bourbon, which I've always found a bourbon to be a lot more um, well-rounded in its flavor profile than a whiskey. I think a whiskey is very poignant. Right. Um, so that, that just might be that. Agreed. Definitely. You know, there's a lot more, a uh, lot more flavor, a lot more depth to it, to a bourbon. Sure. Um, you know, it's funny. Like uh, uh, in my my previous previous employment, I, I actually went to Kentucky for a couple of jobs, and um, I I was kind of looking at the map the other day, and I said, "Wow, I was right next to Bourbon County. I was very, very close." I wish I was into whiskey or whiskey and bourbon at the time because I was right in the mecca of it. You know, I could have seen the distilleries. I could have been, you know, I could have been there just to see, you know, the entire environment where all of this great, great, great drinks are uh, are created and made. Next time, something tells me that uh, there's going to be a guy's trip out to the bourbon trail. Oh yes. Uh, I am totally down. Let's make it a trip. Let's make it a date. How's those, uh, how's those cocktail glasses coming there, Jimmy? He has two ice balls right now and two glasses. And uh, he is, James is finding his bitters. What kind of bitters are And the... Using? How do you say the the, uh, the cherries? I'll, I'll go through the whole Luxardo. Oh, the, the Luxardo process. cherries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what he was so. looking for. He he had uh, misplaced the Luxardo cherries. All right. All right. So we're back, and I have some ingredients. So we'll uh, kind of go through everything here. Oh, there we go. So uh, I don't have simple syrup. Okay, um, so what I do is I kind of bastardize my own simple syrup. And if you do two tablespoons, basically one to one, so two tablespoons of hot water to two tablespoons of sugar, and you stir it around until it's evaporated in your glass, you have simple syrup. Um, I don't like making big batches of simple syrup because I use it so infrequently that it's a waste. I mean, some people sit there and they'll make like a gallon of it on their stove and put it in a bottle. It will last for a very long time, a couple months, this sugar water, yeah. as long as it's refrigerated. But I, I find this method to be way easier for it, anyone out there that just needs a quick, it's 30 simple, seconds, right? 30 seconds to make simple syrup. Yeah. Right. Um, we also have the classic Angostura orange bitters. Ah, oh, you can't really see that, but Angostura, I'll write it in the uh, the chat. So there's a lot of different bitters out there, right? So I've noticed that over the past couple of years. Also talk about the bottle too. The, um, I will. The pack. Sure. So <sighs> Angostura bitters has been around for ages, okay? It says on the bottle since 1824. Bitters kind of adds that extra like spice, orangey essence to your cocktail. Um, I don't like using aromatic bitters because I think that adds too much of like an anise black licorice, which I flip and hate black oh, licorice. Oh no. Um, and I think Bad. an old fashioned is more of a classic cocktail with orange because you go back to prohibition. The reason people made old fashions was because whiskey was not really palatable during the twenties and thirties. People were making it in their bathtub. They were making it in, you know, vats and it was watered down and it was shitty. It so like, like shit. Yeah, people were drinking for effect during Prohibition, oh, and really yeah. only like 
the elitists had access to unwatered down, like straight, really good whiskey. Like they had so they would, person that made them. right. So they'd come up with these cocktails to sort of mask the flavor of the base whiskey. So I've done my basically two tablespoons, three tablespoons water, three tablespoons sugar melted um, in the glasses. I've added an ice ball to each old to each rocks glass, so we're kind of as such. I have Angostura um, branded orange bitters, which I've typed in the chat, and then the creme de la creme here, which I think is the only cocktail cherry to use is the infamous Luxardo cherry. These are all made in Italy. They're dried in Italy. They're packaged in Italy. They are the best cocktail cherry. Um, if I was left alone with this, I would eat the whole bottle and regret it in the morning, but I would enjoy every <laughs> bite of it, okay? Oh, the, the, the production of those cherries is amazing. Yeah, it's they dry them and they put them out in the sun and the Mediterranean. And it's such a big deal. Only one place in the world that they can make those, too. Exactly, right? Italy. So we're going to go with two ounces of barrel proof, barrel proof. which is kind of ridiculous. But what? Yeah, we, we did small batch. So, so I have my jigger, and it actually is an OXO, so it measures out to two ounces. Perfecto. So we're going to go two ounces. And we'll do another two ounces. Actually, the two ounces is going to go into the same glass. No, it won't. So two ounces in the other one. Oh, four ounce. A little four ounce. Oh, four glass, ounce. Huh? No. All right. So those are two ounces. So the two ounces have just gone into the. Um, let's see if I can get it on the picture here. So the two ounces of barrel proof Elijah Craig into the. Two tables, basically the two tablespoons of simple syrup. I'll say like four tablespoons altogether. Um, orange Angostura. You'll go three dashes into each glass. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Bam, bam, bam. And then you top it off with one Luxardo cherry, but I never do one. I always do two. Because who wants just one cherry in their drink? Nobody. You want a cherry for the end. You want cherries for the end. You want cherries for and the end. And if you're a respectable, Actually, if you're any respectable bartender, would give you two. I'd say like a like a cherry halfway, maybe a cherry in the end. Yeah, that's exactly what it's there that's for. So you finish it off, right? And, right. and and like if you ever had a, a jar of Luxardos, like this syrup is like candy. It's like this liquid, rich, thick syrup. You've eaten. I don't, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's just like dripping this Hell like yeah. syrup. So you try to get some of the, yeah, you it's, it's not. So you get some of the syrup, you plop it into the glass. Oh, and it drips so you, you into it. You just have that like streakiness. Yes, perfect. And there's your old fashioned. I'm gonna hand that to Zach. Thank you, sir. He's good to go. Take my next little uh, stick here and get my two cherries. This is great. Thank you, James. Absolutely. The prohibition old fashioned. Yep. Right in front of you. I mean, like, it's very simple, but you have to have the right ingredients. The, um, I mean, you can't substitute, right? No, you really can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can't do a maraschino cherry. It's got to be a Luxardo. Yeah, you want to do a Luxardo. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that just use maraschino cherries, and those are garbage. Exactly. Don't use a maraschino cherry. And also, get Luxardo. Some... Now, the, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them on, uh, you know, various, put it over in your area somewhere, please. You can get them online. I think Amazon sells them for like 20 a jar. A little pricey. Totally worth it, though. Well, well, well worth it. Yeah. Well worth it. Well, quality drinks. So then do a little stir. A little stir with the cherry. Oh, yeah. And then cheers. I think we're ready to... Uh... Sorry, BJ, that you're not able to participate. That's a great old-fashioned. <laughs> the... Next week. The classic old-fashioned here. Look at that. Look at that color. How great. A little bronze copper there. There we go. <laughs> Burnished. <laughs> Burnished. Burnished copper. Wow. Oh. Delish. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I like that one a little bit better than the um, the small batch. Yeah, me too. Because I, I, I like a little a uh, little more bourbon Punch, flavor. A little bit there. more yeah, it's got that bourbon. So so we made them with small batch the other night, and 
obviously it's a lower alcohol percentage. It wasn't as strong, you know, obviously, because we had simple syrup and some other ingredients. Yeah. But man, that barrel proof is really coming through. Oh, That's yeah. That's tasty. Look at that. It's that. A great old fashioned, gotta say. Gotta Super say. simple old fashioned. Get out there. You can get and you can get all these online. And Go on Amazon. Don't, and don't use the premix. There's premix old fashioned. Yeah, premix. Crap out there. There's premix old fashioned mix. There's premix simple syrup. Don't buy that garbage. Make yeah. your own. Like I said, it's so much better. They yeah. do that. That's all gimmicky crap. Yeah. Two tablespoons of hot water with two tablespoons of sugar is your simple base for any drink. You don't yeah. need to. Get a big vat of simple syrup made. Um, very, Angostura orange bitters. Don't get aromatic bitters. Very simple. Process. Unless you like black licorice, which yeah, I don't. I and I don't know anybody. Anybody in the chat likes black licorice? Chime in now because you're. Satchel's like I am oh, the biggest. I love black licorice now. Yeah, if I could <laughs> live in black licorice, I would live there. Black licorice, Bill. So anyway, I, I just I'm more of a fan of the orange aromatics because I think that with the specifically the Elijah Craig, you get a lot of that. Right. So you know why not go with the aromatic that's associated with the flavor of the bourbon, right? It enhances it. Yeah. Yeah. Why why go with a aromatic bitter that more is more of a black licorice flavor? That I mean, yeah. I guess maybe with a gin cocktail, but I, I'm not going to use it with. Oh, well, that would that would totally take it down. Yeah, no, yeah, that would, that, exactly. Like the flavors would completely clash. Yeah. Mm. Cheers again. What a great old fashioned. Yeah, that's so good. So easy to make too. With the right ingredients. Don't get shit bourbon. Get Elijah Craig. Yeah, I mean, if you can pick up a barrel proof Elijah Craig. And make some old fashions, or even with the small batch. Yeah, I mean, it's great. I'm with not both discounting. Of them. I, I'm not discounting the small batch, but it is so good. It is great so with both good. of them. This one is like even more enhanced than the one that we had before. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am totally hitting the table. Sorry, that's right. Like uh, I was, uh, I thought we might uh, might have lost BJ. He's still there. No, like the the, the phone would have gone. I would oh, have like dropped tips. you. Oh no, we're good. We haven't dropped it once, so it's not jinx it. We have ten minutes left in our in our stream tonight. Oh, the the candle was a good idea. Yep. So BJ, do you have any parting words? We're down to our last ten minutes of our show today. Do you? Uh, how do you think? I uh, think, uh, I think recap. We it tonight. I mean, yeah. Elijah Craig, that was uh, what a pick. What a yeah. great pick, man. I. So I will share with some of the people here with us, uh, good news on the horizon. I have our logo. Our logo is almost ready to go. Heck yeah. Shout out to Nick in Indonesia. <laughs> Hello, Nick. Nick in Indonesia on Fiverr, if he's out there. He, uh, Thank you, Nick. he hand drew our logo, and I think it looks awesome. And uh, we'll debut it on our next show. He's, uh, he's almost wrapped up... Uh, it might have to be the uh, maybe the uh, the the logo starts the logo shows and then the barrel body. Yeah, we'll do a little fade out and then the song that we've uh, put together for sure. So we all start out. We're like, BJ, yeah. how you doing? I'm doing great, man. <laughs> I wish you were here. I next was next week, though. Yep. But you are here. At the same time, you are here. Yeah, you're here in spirit, and you're literally here on FaceTime, so it's not like you're not here. You're yeah. here on my cell phone. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. So yeah, so Elijah Craig, um, big thumbs up. So I'm going to go. Uh, so we did this our first show with the Balmora, um, the Garrison Brothers. Let's start with Small Batch. I want to talk to each one of us and say, is it worth it for the money? That's going to be your first question or answer. And then your second question is going to be give it a 1 to 10 rating. So I'm going to let BJ start with small batch. And I'm going to ask you, is it worth it for the money? And what's your rating? And, if, and if you can give a little description why. Yeah, small batch, 100% worth it for the money. Uh, I think that small batch is, is a daily drinker. That is a, uh, to me, that's something you throw in your bar. And it's an after work, going to bed, nightcap, 
something you can pour yourself that makes you feel great, like a king, like somebody who totally gets it, knows what's going on, that you don't have to feel guilty about pouring yourself often. Um, so definitely, I think that that is a, uh, that is a, uh, a must-have in your bourbon bar. And um, it's something that you don't have to be ashamed to share either. I think that that's easily something you can pour a friend who comes over, you're grilling, you're having dinner, you're doing after dinner. Um, it's something that's definitely worth sharing. And uh, you don't have to feel guilty about pouring often. So for the price, 100%, uh, a 1 out of 10 rating. I'm going to give small batch uh, a, a, an 8. I, I think the small batch is a solid 8 in my book. Um, yeah, solid pickup. Go get it. Great. Awesome. Zach, on to you, buddy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go uh, along with the... Uh, with value first. Let's talk about value. Okay, so value. Absolutely. Like if this is like the 20 to $30 range, 20 to $40 range, right? Uh, bourbon. This is absolutely worth the money for it. Like if you're a seasoned drinker or if you're a novice drinker, whatever it is, when it comes to bourbon, <laughs> this is a great bottle to be able to uh to drink every day to drink every day to yeah. well, also to be able to you know you, you can you can smell the flavors you can taste the flavors yeah you can really pick everything out of it and really enjoy it um one to ten rating one to ten rating i will i'll go along you know what i really like this one i'll give it a nine nine all right the nine yeah. the nine small batch for me I like it. So for the value, absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with both of your statements. It's that bourbon that you can just grab off the shelf. You can drink it every day. You can have it at that barbecue. You can share it with friends. I don't believe that if anybody respects bourbon or even has any knowledge or whiskey and taste and has the right taste, that they're going to shit on it. They are going to appreciate this for what it is. Um, and it's known for it. Like, people know that are in the community, bourbon whiskey community, that Elijah Craig Small Batch is probably the best value for the money. And it absolutely is. Everybody can get it. It's pretty much at every mom and pop liquor store, uh, every, you know, Kroger, Albertsons, Ralph's, Piggly Wiggly. You can go get it. Go buy it. Get a bottle of Small Batch. You're not going to be disappointed. Have you ever been to a Piggly Wiggly before? I have not been to the South to go to a Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> I have. <laughs> well, find Elijah Craig next time you're down store. there. I would have loved to grab that. So my one to ten, I'm going to give it an eight. Uh, that's a very high rating for me. I am probably the most critical out of this group. I really like. This. Yeah, really and good. it's it's up there. It's really good. Um, moving on to barrel proof, I'm going to jump right in uh, and say value for the money because I don't want us to go over our, our time. We only have five more minutes. Uh, value for the money at $60, $70, absolutely. Barrel Proof is so complex. It's so good. Um, it's somewhat readily available. Um, the next level, Elijah Craig, the Barrel Proof. You can kind of see it there, Barrel Proof, unfocused Barrel Proof. There it is, Barrel Proof. Um, and what's great about it is that every iteration, every edition that comes out, I think comes out every six months or every year, has a different like alcohol percentage. So this one is the one that's coming in at 61.1. This is specifically the batch B519. So that came out in 2019, the last two digits are the year. That's interesting. Yep. I didn't know that the uh, the ABV was different for each one. Yep. Well, it makes sense, yeah, because each barrel is its own, barrel. yeah. So uh, one to 10, I'm going to give uh, barrel proof an 8.5. Very good. So, Zach, what do you think? Value for the money? Barrel proof. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I will say the same thing. Like, this, the barrel proof is small batches, bigger brother. Mm -hmm. Same flavors. It's just a good way to put it. Absolutely. More concentrated, more punch, yeah. more just, like like BJ said, full body. Yeah. You get a lot body. of full body with full this Full body. One. Full body with that one. So, we had, so, you know, to kind of compare the two, um... Uh, the small batch, a lot easier to drink, right? Yeah. As a, for, for like an amateur novice. Approachable. Drinker, right? yeah. Approachable, easy to drink. 
this one might be a little more um it might might have a little more uh ethanol alcohol taste punch and yeah punch to it so like if you uh if you haven't had a whole lot of bourbon start with this one graduate to this one Right. So start with small batch and then graduate to barrel proof. Exactly. There you so go. like we we had an old fashioned the other night with the uh, the small batch, and uh, tonight's barrel proof small barrel this, proof. This is fantastic. Yeah, completely proof, different fashion. drink, but a lo- just a lot more a lot more punch, a lot more full bodiness to it. You know, it's a lot more concentrated. So, um, one to uh, ten rating. One to ten rating. Ah oh, man. You guys gave it like a, you gave it like an extra 0. 0.5. Yeah. Um, I like them equally. I'll, I'll give another, it an eight. Another and, eight. Okay. I'll give it an eight. Uh, like, I, I can't say no to this. I can't say no to that. I would love both. Of, if somebody held both of those up to me and said, give me one or the other, I would say give them both. <laughs> you know, give, give, give them both to me. I love them both. <laughs> I'm a fan. All right. BJ. Eliza Craig. Eliza Craig. BJ Barrel Proof. Nice full body, big punch, big flavor. Uh, this this is something you pull out that you share with somebody who knows what's going on, or that you're looking to impress, and you say, "Let me let me teach you something. Let me show you something." Yeah, you want to <laughs> try something really good? Let's yeah, try it. absolutely. It's one of those that you can share without feeling too guilty about digging into you know too deep into your stash. So uh, definitely, I'm going to give this a nine. I think that. Wow, the big niner. Solid thing to have in your your bar. Um, And as far as uh, value, yeah, I mean, it's it's right up there with with what I would spend on, you know, Oban or any anything else I would stock my my bar with. So um, definitely, you know what I'm looking out for next week when uh, when I go whiskey hunting. Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig. Love them both. I really do. All right, everybody. We appreciate you all. Uh, glad you all could join us for our stream tonight. Um, for those that don't know, I'm James. This is Zach. And on the phone, EJ. Hi. Hi. Hopefully he'll be joining us in person for our next week's show, which we'll be doing Smoke Wagon. Heck yeah. Big cheers. Big cheers, everybody. So thanks to you. for, uh, yeah, to you all and to each other. So. Thanks for joining the show. We uh, we killed two hours like it was nothing. Wow. A lot of fun. Yeah. All right? Just hanging out. Subscribe so you know. Yeah, if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you know when we're back live next exactly. Thursday. You get an instant notification. When yep. we go live, you're going live. Exactly. Let's drink with the be- drinking buddy. The <laughs> drinking buddy. The barrel buddies. So, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. It's a good night. All right. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks. Bye.